So my name is Effie Russi and uh, I work in RD1 and I will present to you today some of my own work and some work from other people from our group uh, on the extremes. The title of my talk is Weather and Climate Extremes, the role of atmospheric circulation. Uh, first of all, as a motivation, uh, why do we care about weather and climate extremes? Because of course they're very impactful, but also because they are increasing in frequency and intensity under anthropogenic climate change. Uh, there are many figures that one could use to show or support this argument, and I chose one from the latest IPCC report, and in particular uh, the summary for policymakers and the very nice visualization I find, uh, which shows a synthesis of uh, observed changes in hot extremes and also the confidence in the role of human contribution to those observed changes. So here the regions of the world are uh, represented by these hexagons and the color of the hexagons show the type of observed change, whether it is an increase, a decrease, or whether there is low agreement or no uh, much data on this region. And you can immediately see that there is no decrease in any region of the world. Um, uh, in the contrary, hot extremes have been increasing everywhere apart from uh, four regions there where the agreement is low or there is limited data. Um, additionally, with the dots inside the hexagons, we can see how much confidence we have that the, there is a strong human contribution to, the, to this increase. And uh, three dots are the maximum, and we see that many regions do have these three dots. Especially if we focus on Europe, we see that all European regions are, um, have this increase in hot extremes, and uh, the, conf the confidence in human contribution is really high. Uh, in the same uh, report, you can find uh, similar figures for precipitation extremes and also for dry, dry extremes. Uh, the question is now uh, how and um, in, uh, how much are those extremes related to atmospheric circulation dynamics? Because on one hand, there are, there, there are the thermodynamics, which are simpler to understand and to model, but uh, the atmospheric circulation dynamics are more complex. And according to the same report of IPCC, there is low confidence in how dynamic changes have affected and will affect the location and magnitude of extreme events. And uh, we also know from recent uh, research that the surface inputs of such changes are under, underestimated by climate models. This actually links very well also to the talk given earlier by Peter Hoffman. Uh, so I would like to show you a few things about uh, some, some of the extremes that we saw last year in 2021 that have to do in some way with atmospheric circulation and jet stream config configurations. For example, starting with the uh, winter 2021, we had this particularly cold spell in North America and Europe, which was uh, linked to a disruption of the stratospheric polar vortex. This in turn influenced the jet stream in the troposphere uh, that was particularly wavy or meandering, let's say. And this allowed for cold, cold polar air to go to, high, to lower latitudes and um, central US and southern US states, causing many disruptions. And we saw this cold wave also in Europe. Later in summer, in June 2021, we had an extreme heat wave in Northwest America, uh, which according to an attribution study that was done afterwards, was virtually impossible without climate change, anthropogenic climate change. And uh, this is a characteristic figure from CBS News. Uh, they called this um, a historic heat dome. Heat dome is another way to uh, refer to a blocking high pressure system practically. This is again an omega block, similar to what we also saw earlier from PETA. And uh, this blocking high system stayed in place for a long time, causing extreme heat and drought in the region. And coming closer to us, spatially, uh, we of course had the extreme precipitation and catastrophic floods in July 2021 in Central Europe, Western Germany and the surrounding regions. And of course, this is also related to atmospheric circulation patterns and to the jet stream. And for example, this was characterized by a um, cutoff low, Sorry. So a low pressure system that was not embedded in the normal, let's say, flow of the jet stream, which was positioned in a northern, northern position compared to climatology uh, this summer. Uh, I will now show you some of the results of my current work, uh, which are currently in revision in nature communications. And um, these have to do with heat extremes and jet stream configurations uh, for Europe. Uh, 
So we know that in recent decades, Europe has faced an increase in devastating heat waves. And in this work, we tried to quantify, the, quantify this increase and compare it to other regions. And we found that the increase in Europe is faster than in the rest of the mid latitudes. We can see that in those two figures. On the first one on the left hand side, we see uh, for each grid point of the mid latitudes, the trend of heat wave cumulative intensity in degrees Celsius per decade. And indeed, we can see that many regions of Europe uh, present hotspots. And uh, on the right hand side, we have plotted the distributions, the PDFs of those trends for all grid points of the mid latitudes and all grid except excluding Europe with blue color. And the grid points over Europe, as seen in this um, extended European domain, as seen in this box, in brown. And we see how the distribution for Europe is shifted to much larger values. And if we look at the mean, which is uh, plotted with these numbers here, uh, the mean over Europe is almost four times the mean of the mid latitudes. But the question is, why is this happening? And whether there are some links to atmospheric circula circulation changes that can explain this difference. Uh, so in order to answer this question, we looked at jet stream states and we found that a, a composite, um, a cluster of double jets that look like this first figure. So here we see the anomalies of the zonal wind at the 250 hectopascal level, which is near the tropopause where the jet stream blow. Um, and we see that there are two zones of positive anomalies, so increased winds, uh, in the northern and southern location and in between over Northern and Central Europe, we have particularly weak winds. Uh, those double jet days have been found to increase. We are talking about um, July and August, high summer months, and the period of the reanalysis data, uh, data set era five from 1979 to 2020. And we see that those double jet days have increased both in frequency and persistence. And this increase is driven by the increase in persistence. So we have more consecutive days of double jet occurrence. And if we look at the composite of the double Z days uh, regarding the cumulative intensity of heat waves uh, compared to climatology, we see hotspots in different regions of the Eurasian sector, but most uh, importantly here over Western Europe. So then we wanted to see whether this, the, the double Z variability can explain some part of the heat wave variability over Europe. And we applied the linear regression model. And here we see the results. So here we see the explained heat wave variance by the double Z variability. And we see that all, all the dots that are, um, uh, all the dots that we see in uh, many grid points over Western Europe are statistically significant contributions. And the explained variance in Western Europe reaches up to 35%. Uh, then we wanted to see whether the increase in the double jet persistence that we found can explain some of the heat wave trend in Europe. And here we saw the estimated heat wave trend uh, based only in this increase in persistence of double jets. So all the grid points that have dots now mean that they have the same sign of trend as the observed. So we see that this is the case for large regions of Europe. And if we aggregate over the whole European domain, then almost 30% of the trend can be explained by this increase in persistence of double jets. While if we focus only in this smaller part of Western Europe, this reaches up to 100%, which is a very important finding. And uh, now we'll go a little bit further back and show you some results of our study led by Georgia Di Capua, uh, which was published uh, late last year on the drivers of the 2010 summer extremes. Um, again, this uh, summer was um, very characteristic because we had uh, contemporaneous uh, concurrent extremes, the Russian heat wave and the Pakistan flood, which were actually linked by an atmospheric wave train. So um, an atmospheric wave train in the upper troposphere, uh, a succession of high and highs and lows practically that connected the two extremes. In this study, we looked at a large ensemble uh, of a modeling experiment for summer 2010 in order to try to um, calculate the contribution uh, of different factors to, this, to the occurrence of this atmospheric wave train. And three factors were important uh, in favoring this wave train. First, sea surface temperature anomalies over the globe. Uh, in particular, this year was characterized by a strong La Nina uh, phase in the Pacific. Also, early summer soil moisture deficit in Russia, more or less in the same region of the heat wave, was important. 
and most importantly, high latitude land warming. So here, to, uh, when we talk about high latitude, we mean uh, above 65 degrees north. And this is important uh, specifically for our research because this high latitude land warming, which is part also of the greater Arctic amplification that um, we know, uh, it has to do also with the weakening of, it results actually to a weakening of the jet stream and the storm tracks. And also it seems to be favoring double jet states like the ones that I discussed before. Uh, so I have one last slide with some very, I will very briefly refer to other research that we are doing in the group. So we have been also looking at the uh, AMOX slowdown and the consequent North Atlantic cold blob and their links to the European heat waves, because we have seen in some observational studies recently that some important heat waves like 2015 and 2018 were preceded by particularly cold uh, North Atlantic sea surface temperatures. And uh, our student Tamara looked at this in a model and found that under a doubling experiment, indeed, uh, summer temperatures over Europe are preceded by this cold May sea surface temperatures. Other topics we have been looking at are coincidence uh, analysis of heat waves with double sets and also the Mandering Index, which links, which links to previous work by Georgia and, and um, together with Team Kaumau. And we have been also working together with Johanna Beckman for the, from the Ice Dynamics Group and been, uh, have been looking at the Greenland melt events and the links to, to Greenland blocking. I will not go into details, but this is just an example of a causal effect network for clean and blown kick index. And last, um, the Georgia Di Capo is also continuing her research on uh, the interactions of the monsoon, both the Indian and the South American monsoon, and the mid latitude circulation. And this is an example of her uh, master student, Luisa, about uh, the Indian Ray for a causal effect network. So um, concluding, I wanted to say that uh, dynamical changes and impacts are still an, an active debate in research, but this is not because they have not, cannot or will not happen, but because of the large noise and internal variability and the many interacting and often counteracting drivers. So as we saw, models underestimate impacts of dynamical changes and dynamical changes. So it is very important to have improved models, both in terms of resolution and physics. And the, in this way, uh, in the inclusion of explainable machine learning and causal discovery algorithms could be uh, really helpful. So just a, a very general thing to end with, we should not forget that we live in a very interconnected world. And one recent example is the uh, eruption of the Tonga volcano that actually was felt um, in a, a, caused a shock wave in the atmosphere and was felt all over the world. And this is a pr pressure uh, time series of German weather stations that show this, um, how the pressure reacted to this wave. Yeah, so that's all. Thank you very much.